friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about the benefits and uses of plantain. This is the herb, not the one that's related to a banana. So this is something that most people should be able to grow and probably already are growing and don't even realize it because it grows wild everywhere. And there's several varieties of plantain, but the one that is mostly talked about is the broadleaf plantain. And it looks like this. But the lance leaf plantain should have pretty similar benefits, if not exactly the same. But the seed that we sell on our store is for the broadleaf. And before I go into all the benefits, let me just say, if you choose to buy seed and start planting it, try to find a special area where you want just that to grow because it self seeds all over the place and can easily overtake a whole garden area. But that's also what makes it really great is that just about anyone can grow this in wherever they are and it is so beneficial in many different ways and i'm sure if you didn't know until you're seeing these photos that i'm putting up you're probably now going oh that's the thing i'm always trying to eradicate from my yard just like those dandelions so a lot of times we find that those weeds that come up and want to take over everything a lot of them have the most benefits dandelions even ladies thumbs so first let's talk about the nutrients and mostly we're going to be talking about the leaves but the seeds as well and even the roots have their place so here's a list of the main nutrients and that is your a c K, zinc, potassium, and iron. Again, most of what I'm gonna be talking about is the leaves, but let me focus on the seeds for just a little bit. The seeds contain psyllium, which is really good for digestive health. And out of the plant as a whole, the seeds have been the one that's been most promising for helping to prevent and cure cancer. But the roots are also showing to be effective against cancer as well. So now let me get on to the list of benefits and the health issues this can be good for. The first thing I'm listing off is going to be good whether you take it internally or use it externally, and that is as an anti-inflammatory, an antifungal, and an antibacterial. Now the rest of this part of the list is going to apply more if you're taking it internally in the form of a tincture, a tea, or you're eating it as a vegetable and so on. And it's going to help with coughs, colds, preventing tumors, protecting the liver, again with the digestive health, also for heart health, respiratory health, as a diuretic, and it's also a great antioxidant. And then externally, it can be used in various different ways, and I'll go into that in a little bit, but it can help with bug bites, stings, eczema, burns, scratches, abrasions, even minor cuts. And since it is antifungal, this would also be helpful in using topically for fungal type infections, such as ringworm and more. And then it's also said to be really good for drawing out things out of the skin, such as splinters and glass shards. Now let's talk a little bit about its uses. The thing about the plantain, plantain leaf, it has very little to mild flavor. It is kind of greenish tasting, but not as strong as certain other greens. And so it can blend very well. The only issue I have with using plantain is those little stringy parts through the leaves. They can be kind of tough, so you might want to pull those out of the leaves while they're fresh. Now, if you're using the leaves either fresh or dried into teas, those stringy parts aren't going to matter because that's something you're going to strain out anyway. And if you go to dehydrate the leaves and you go to crumble them up, those little stringy parts come out easily. So you don't have to pull those out when you're dehydrating them. But when you go to cook with them fresh, like adding them to stir fries or whatever, you might want to usually you just grab hold of that stem real tight. And when you pull those those little stringy parts that go up through the leaf, those will just come right out. They slide right out. And then you can just chop the leaf up and use it however you want. You can add this to green smoothies. And as I mentioned, the tea, you can make tinctures or, or an extract depending on the strength you're looking at looking at and the type of solvent you're using. If you're wanting to just take little bits at a time, 
that's why a lot of times people will tincture it you can also powder it up or just flake it up and use it in capsules and take it as a supplement in that way and then i did mention the mixed greens blend i don't actually add it to my mixed greens blend anymore but it used to be one of the many greens i would throw in there along with the dandelion greens the kale and various things mix them all together grape leaves strawberry leaves so on uh, and nettle i can't forget the nettle that's one of the main ingredients in my mixed greens blend Blend. and then that's something that will go into just about every meal I make it will go into soups it'll go into sauces it'll go into gravies and casseroles and so much more it is a really good way to get some various different greens that maybe your family or you don't really like the taste of once they're dehydrated up like dandelion leaves can be kind of bitter you dehydrate these things up it makes the flavor much more mild and is easier to add to dishes and hide into dishes but the number one way i actually use the plantain leaves is to i dehydrate them up as you can see here this is just one of the jars this is my 2021 jar i think i might have two jars from 2021 but it is for the purpose of using in making a healing salve as you can see here one of my jars is a uh, one quarter of it left there i'm gonna need to get make some more up but my infused oil for going into that salve is right here and one of the main ingredients in this is the dried plantain as well as some other herbs and if you're interested in this and learning how I made this as well as how I made the salve I have two different videos one on the infused oil and then one on using the oil to make the salve so I'll link to both of those down below and i've used this a lot it, this has been great stuff i put it on scratches and burns and and various different minor skin issues and it's worked really well you can use it on acne as well remember it's antibacterial so it's really good for any of that stuff and then the other way i've used it a couple of different times is just being out in the garden and uh never been stung by a honeybee honeybees they'll just leave you alone you can walk through them as long as they're busy and you're leaving them alone they'll they won't bother you but it's the yellow jackets here that are more likely likely to sting you just because and there's been two different times where i was out in the garden had a yellow jacket land on me one i just did one of these things you know because i felt something and of course i made it sting me by doing that and in both occasions i was right there in the garden i had the plantain growing right there reached down grabbed the leaf chewed it up and stuck it on that sting and in that short period of time i could feel while it took me to do that as i could feel the sting starting to get more and more painful as soon as i applied that masticated plantain leaf to that sting immediately the pain started to reverse itself where within just two minutes of having that poultice on there the sting was the pain was entirely gone and once i took the the poultice off there was you couldn't even see a mark left and this is a wasp sting so i can personally testify that it is very effective a, for wasp stings which would make me think it would work very, just as well on any other kind of insect bite or sting that you may get so basically what this is right here is my replacement for neosporin but i also use it for other things even just for softening extra dry skin i can use it that way too though i do try to reserve it more for skin ailments and then use my other skin creams for just uh softening my hands feet knees whatever dry skin i need to take care of now I'm sure I'm missing a whole lot of other great benefits from the plantain. The, I just wanted to throw a few ideas out there and share with you how I use it and give you a few ideas how you can use it. And if you're using plantain already, share with us down below your favorite ways to use it. Do you make a tincture, an extract? Do you powder it and use it in capsules? Do you make infu oil infusions like I do? Or do you just prefer to use it as a green to add to your stir fries and soups and whatever else it is you like to make? Share with us down below so other people can learn from you as well and any other health benefits that you know it has that I didn't cover here. And if you're interested in more herbs and their benefits and uses and how I use them, I'll put my whole playlist that I've been working on for the over five years now in the description box down below so you can check that out. 
as well as any other relevant videos I think that you might appreciate. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.